it is truly awful to, to think, you know, when you sit and read or you listen to some of the accounts of these uh, these young girls, um, you know, 25 years a, a detective and a lot of that dealing with gruesome homicides. Um, this is the most challenging set of investigations I've dealt with and some of the, the stories that people have to tell about their lives are, are awful. Um, and you have to be careful that you don't get too ardent to that. Some of the women and girls involved were known to social services, leaving questions for the council's chief executive. Was any of their plight ignored before the police got involved? Can you say that categorically? Absolutely not. One was in care of the local authority and was a child at the time of the offences. Do you feel you let her down though? Of course, if anything like that happens, then, you know, we, we, we don't think that that's acceptable from a council point of view. Could your staff have done more to stop this? Should they have done more to stop this? My staff and the staff in, in, in social services did everything they could. The starting point for this entire investigation was in December 2013, when one child and one vulnerable young woman reported claims to social services just days apart. The scale of the police offensive that followed was unprecedented. Visits were made to every taxi company, pub, hotel and guest house across the county. Leaflets put into the hands of thousands of people to urge them to share any information or suspicions they might have. But police used one other extraordinary tactic to try and crack this case, and it almost ended disastrously. A convicted child rapist, identified only as XY, was paid almost £10,000 over almost two years to spy on sex parties where abuse was being carried out and serve as an informant for the police. Acting as an informal taxi driver, he claimed... I was chilling with the boys. I would get them where they pick up the drugs, where the parties were. He told the court he went to one or two of the parties but claimed to have left before any abuse took place, adding... Because I knew what was coming, before it was coming. His evidence, though, was ruled unreliable and dishonest by a judge. Defence barristers in the final trial of Operation Shelter at one point arguing unsuccessfully that all the charges should be thrown out because of it. Northumbria's chief constable, though, has firmly defended the use of a strategy he admits he signed off on. Do you stand by the decision to hire a known child sex offender to act as an informant on this, and not only that, pay them nearly £10,000 to do so? It's difficult. Um, it, it, it's, it's extremely difficult. Um, what I would say in relation to that is um, when the problem you're seeking to, to address is one of men abusing vulnerable women and girls behind locked doors, uh, who am I going to go to to get that information? Um, because it isn't uh, a figure in authority. It isn't a law-abiding member of, 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 of society. Um, it is quite often the case that the only way we're going to gather that information about who is being abused, by who, where and when, is to step into that murky, shadowy, it nearly dangerous backfired world. backfired spectacularly, though, didn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. This is fraught with danger. There are risks in every single corner that you turn in relation to this type of work. Would you do it again? Absolutely. But I recognise how hard that will be for, for some members of the public to accept. That's the world that we have to step into if we're going to drive this problem out and put people behind bars where they belong. Arguments over this aspect of police work will continue, but what's undeniable is the dark truth that Newcastle streets have joined an unenviable list of places where this kind of crime happened, and according to the police, maybe still is happening tonight.